All right, let's go to Merlinda in Oklahoma. What's up, Merlinda? Hey, not much. How are you, Dr. John? Partying. I can't think of a more Oklahoma name than Merlinda. That's fantastic. Well, thank you. I take that as a compliment. You should. You should. <laughs> so what's up? Well, okay. So I have a question, and in the grand scheme of everything that's going on in the world, it feels kind of like a dumb question. Wow. Can I stop you right um, there? Yes. I can almost guarantee that's part of the problem. Whatever you're about to ask me, I I want you to have permission to own whatever's bringing you down. Okay. You promise? And uh, promise. And okay. I might cry. Bring so. it on. I might cry with you. Okay. Um, my question is this. <clears throat> Sorry. How do I learn to love my body? Even when, sorry. Don't, hey, stop apologizing. You're good. Same team. Okay. You're my friend. How do I learn to love my body even when I'm incredibly overweight, like 160 pounds overweight? Because I don't love my body. Okay. When did you? Um, I, I, I hate it. Yeah. I hate the way that I look. Okay. How long have you struggled with your weight? Um, my whole life. I'm, um, I'm a twin, a fraternal twin and fraternal twin is, we all grew up super skinny. And I knew from a comparison age, uh, like whenever I first started noticing that we looked different, um, I was the bigger one and actually was dubbed that as a child, like just at basketball games, my friends, my family, you know, I'm, I'm the bigger twin. So my whole life. So most of us who have struggled with what we see in the mirror, who take our shirts off and look in the mirror and are grossed out. And I've put my, I'll put myself in that category. I've talked about that here. Um, we have an imaginary idea of what we would look like in another body. Or if we would finally just start taking care of ourselves and stop being so lazy or whatever other crap we put on, pile on ourselves. Mm -hmm. You walked alongside a literal person. Yeah. Yeah. She was athletic. She was the popular girl who was pretty. And, and I love her. She's my best friend mm -hmm. and she knows all of these things. Of course. Um, but I, I even remember Dr. John, like at a young age asking her and then I actually, so I have a twin and then I have a younger sister that's just 16 months younger. So we were pretty much like triplets. Mm -hmm. um, and she again was, skinny, tall, popular, pretty athletic. And I, I remember like probably junior high asking them repeatedly, like, Hey, are, are you embarrassed of me? Like, do, you, do I embarrass you? Or do I, um, you know, do you want, do you want to be seen with me? Like unprompted would just ask them that, you know, of course they'd be like, we don't care. Like you're you, like you're fine. But in my mind, um, I was less than. Yeah. And I still, like, I, I still feel that way. And I, and like today's culture, you know, like it's like something that, and, and this has been more recently, like I, I have found like these inadvertent thoughts of comparison. Mm -hmm. Um, you watch a commercial, you know, like, and, and I've noticed like, hmm, there's not very many fat people in that commercial, you know, like, or I, I'm also, I'm a worship pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's always fun. Cause we live stream services. So, you know, I, there's a video every week of that. I, if I would allow myself, I go back and watch and I can critique myself. Um, but like even in the realm that I'm in, just watching different videos, there's, I, I, I find myself looking for people who look like me and realizing like there's not, and, and I don't know if um, people do that consciously or unconsciously, but I immediately do the comparison game and like, okay, well, that's because you're, you're you, you're, you're less than. Yeah. So let, let's, um, I want you to imagine I'm holding your hand. Okay. Cause I want to walk through a few things and it's going to be uncomfortable for a minute until it gets to the other side. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use some intentional, I, I'm going to say things in a, in a less than, um, then my, normally I try to be pretty careful with my language. I'm going to be intentional about some things. Is that okay? Absolutely. Um, I want you to give me some words that come to mind when you think of fat people. 
um, the judgments like, you make. Just let them rattle off the top of your head. Go. Dumb. Yep. Um, Don't hold back now. We're already in it now. I'm, I know. I know. I'm trying to say it when my voice doesn't shake. I'm um, unattractive. Yep. Ugly. ugly. Um, less than, like, in this, as far as, like, not as productive, not as efficient. Okay. Um, people don't, re- like, people don't respect you as much. Okay. Um, you want more? Here, here, we could, and if you and I were sitting down together, yeah, because here's what, here's what I want you to put out, put out there. I do think you don't like your body. I don't make any mistake about that. I'll even go as far as to say, I believe you that you hate your body, but you hate Merlanda. And those words you use to describe all those other people are the words you use. That's the stories you tell yourself. And I'll also go with you that those are stories you inhabited. That was the air you breathed, that you're the big girl. You're the what? And there was a reality to that. You have a different, you have a ge- different genetic makeup. Your body's different than your twin sister. Right. Right. So right. you, you, you had that. There was a reality to that. And there was a narrative that you were the, this one and you were one of them, not one of them to the point right. that as a young kid, most kids can be so unaware that they're different. You were not. So somebody somewhere was making it pretty, pretty clear. Not hundred percent. And so that story over time, those stories from the kids, from your parents, from that aunt, that's just like, Oh honey, you shouldn't eat that. Like all that when you're six, for God's sake, all of that, those stories, they become stories you tell yourself in your own voice. And I, agree. I, I learned this in a heavy conversation. If you haven't heard my interview with Sal Stefano, I had him on my show a while back. He's one of the mind pump guys. Okay. One of the heaviest conversations I've had around this topic. And he said something that um, I got choked up on the, on the interview because it never occurred to me. He said, John, you cannot hate yourself. You can't hate your body into better shape. You can't go to the gym and try to get rid of how disgusting you are. Mm. You can't look at healthy food and shove it down your throat because you are so grossed out by, it doesn't work like that. It's a recipe for crash and burn. So and the, probably for yo-yo dieting because that's for, what I've done my whole life. Yes. And you know how you can yo-yo diet because you're one of the strongest people around? You can grit your teeth because you're strong. You've had to be your whole life. You're real strong. You can grit your teeth and you can lose 30 pounds, but you ha- still hate Merlanda. Yep. And so it's, what we're looking for here is less about how do I not hate my body? It's how do I make peace with Merlanda? And when I decide to go work out, I'm giving Merlanda a gift because I love her. When I decide to not go crush another box of whatever, which was me. Last night I bought seven, seven boxes of uh, Girl Scout cookies. Those evil (laughs) kids who sell them one month after everyone's New Year's resolution. Um, But I didn't dominate them last night based on a conversation I had with Lane Norton who said, hey, it's a story you're telling yourself that you can't help yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you can. And John, my friend, is worth more than that. And when he told me those words, it was, it was like a light bulb came on. And really, I do this for a living. I've been having this conversation for 30 years. And here I am now. Oh, yeah. I can't hate myself into long-term behavior change. I got to love myself that way. Same as you can't hate and nag your husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend into changing. It doesn't work. Right. Right? So right. tell me two or three things that Merlanda is really amazing at? Um, contrary to my own, my, my own beliefs, I'm a really good leader. Um, I am. Okay. Can I actually, stop you right there? Yeah. Can we agree on the outset that your beliefs about yourself are inaccurate often? 
Hundred percent. Sweet. All right, cool. That's usually like seven or eight sessions right there. That's fantastic. Okay, so you know that your feeling signals can be off or they can be wrong, which is awesome. Okay, so you're great at worship leading. Does that mean you're a great singer, a great guitarist, or you're great at bringing um, people into community? Bringing people into community. Awesome. Not just like on stage, but like in. I can think of few and... gifts greater to humanity than someone who can rally people together for a common purpose. Good for you. What else? Um, I'm very, very kind and caring okay. for other people. Um, what are those things I'm good at? I've, I've become, I don't know. Why is this so hard and every, the negative things are so easy? Well, because our brains are wired for them and you've had a steady stream of negativity dumped into your heart and mind your whole life. And negative things are what get us killed, not the positive stuff. So our brains are wired to look for the negative because it doesn't want to die. Yeah. And that means we have to work really hard, especially in this world with all the cell phones and all the attention and all the video streams that you're on every week. That when our brain is going, there's a threat, there's a threat, there's a threat. We also have to counter that with, and there's joy. And there's laughter. And there's somebody who's working to really love herself after a long time of not having a roadmap for what that looks like. Yeah. Here's a way, a place I want you to start. Okay. A couple of things. Number one, I want you to start treating my friend Miranda like you treat those people at your church. You're kind to them. You welcome them. You laugh. And when they say, I screwed up this and I can't believe I slept with so-and-so and I did this, you say, oh my gosh, I love you. And I want you to treat Miranda like that. And what that means is that's a morning practice and an evening practice. And you're going to have to do it double time because you've been on this track for on another set of tracks for a long time. I love Merlanda because. And don't so make I'm a, a logistical. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Like you mean like I'm a logistics person and I talk told it to like one of my small group classes a lot. Like get a, so, go, go get a, go get a journal today from the store, a brand new one that you've never written in before. Okay. And then, and, and I would put down. swear words in it if, if I wasn't talking to a worship leader. <laughs> but at the top, I would put why Miranda is worth loving. No, not okay. even that. Miranda is worth loving, period. How about that? Miranda, I'm sorry. Miranda is worth loving, period. And then underneath it, write down. Merlanda is somebody who treats people with dignity and respect. Merlanda is somebody who is loved. Merlanda is someone who, and f keep going. And by the way, you're going to start seeing that a lot of the stuff is performance-based about what you can do for other people. I want you to get beneath that. Is that like part of it? Because that is like, as you were asking, what's, you know, what are the things that I'm good at? I mean, I... A hundred percent, or I would not hundred percent, but probably 97% of all the things that I think that I'm good at is how I can make other people's lives better. That's because your like whole life, you have like always felt worthless and not pretty and not worthy of being talked to or looked at or sat with. And so you created a world where you could go out and act your way into worth and value. And God, Merlana, that's exhausting, isn't it? It is. And you're spot on. It's exhausting. Here's the second thing I want you to do, and this is going to be the most annoying challenge, okay? And you're going to have to practice this. If you and I started salsa dancing classes, we would be terrible, <laughs> right? Right. And we would know that because we had never taken salsa dancing before, and we would laugh and stumble around and fall, and our instructor would be like, Oh, get out of my class. And then we'd pay him and he'd be like, all right, you can come back. It'd be a whole thing. <laughs> so as okay. you're practicing this new thing, I want to, I'm going to get this new task. I want to give you, give yourself grace. You don't know what you're doing. You've never done this before. Okay. It's going to be a lot of stumbling and falling and tripping and it's okay. Cause it's all new. And you'd be like, Oh man, I screwed that one up. Have that attitude about it. Not, well, there's another thing I can put in the Merlanda sucks pile. Okay. I want you to okay. carry this journal around with you everywhere. And by the way, I got one right here on my desk right now. Okay. I want you to carry it around with you. And when you have a negative thought about Merlanda, write it down. Okay. 
every single time. It's like taking a budget except for your thoughts. I, you know, like you have apps, like I use the every dollar app to, for my expenses. And every time I buy something, it shows up and it reminds me, you just spent this, you just spent this. I want you to do that with your thoughts. Cause what we have to do in real quick order is take capture of our thoughts. The things that are circling in your mind all day, you're going to be stunned at how often you walk by a mirror and think I'm disgusting or gross or oh, why do I wear this shirt? Or when you're watching yourself and there could be a thousand people in your church being led through a pretty remarkable worship service. And all you can see when you're watching the tape back is how unattractive you think you look. I yeah. want you to write all of that down. And here's the second part of that. Write it down and challenge that. Is this true? And most of the time, the answer is no. Now, I'm also going to tell you hard truth. Is, this, is it okay? Absolutely. If you look at a photo of yourself or you walk by the mirror and you think the words, I need to lose weight, you probably do. But yeah. not to be loved. Not so that you finally have value. But because you're worth getting up and your back not hurting and your knees not hurting and you feeling recklessly beautiful and you live in to be 80 years old so you can continue to bring people together in joy and love and comfort. Is that fair? Absolutely. Yes. And so become, like I said, exercise becomes a gift, becomes an awesome thing that you give Merlanda taking, like working with somebody to change how you eat all, all that stuff. Like that becomes a gift. It doesn't become a, a burden or a chore. It's an annoying gift. <laughs> I don't like all my gifts, but <laughs> it's a gift. It's definitely felt like punishment. Of course. Like my whole life. Because you hate like, you I, and you deserve to be punished. Right? Yep. Merlinda, that stops today. Same team? Same team. Will yeah. you reach out and call somebody in your area and tell them I've hated myself for the last time? Yes. Okay. Yes, I will. Anything, I, I'll be with you every step of the way. Okay. And, and again, I want you to hear me say this. This isn't a weight loss journey. This is going to be a journey about rediscovering Merlanda and finally giving that little girl a voice. Finally letting that little girl know that she's loved and valued, even though she doesn't look like her sister. And here's another honest take. You may need to get with a doctor. They have had some advancements in, um, Obesity care that is unimaginable 10 years ago. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay. See, I've thought about those things and it's made me think, oh, well, just because you're weak, even though no. like I've completed 75 hard and I could do a CrossFit workout and I haven't had sweets since November 1st. Like I haven't had any candy or like I could do think hard things, but in my mind, I, those negative start, thoughts just start derailing me. You can do some and, hard things, but you can't do the ultimate hard thing yet. The yeah. ultimate hard thing is forgiving Merlanda for hating herself for so long and deciding today I'm going to go do something different. Okay. I took anxiety yeah. medication for a couple of years and it saved my life. And I don't recommend people take medicine. And I sat at my kitchen table and I wept. I felt like such a freaking loser. And anxiety medication did not cure me. But it did give me the opportunity to start doing the things that would heal me. Okay. Sitting down with the doctor and going through whether it's medication or whether it's, or there's all kinds of different paths here and don't let any right. nonsensical influencer or moron on YouTube. That's between you and your doctor and your physician. Okay. Okay. You're not weak. You just happen to live in a sliver of history when we have some of the most extraordinary advancements in the history of mankind that can help people in our situation. And our situations are different. Fair? No, fair. That makes sense, though. Starting today, you okay. like Merlanda, and you're nice to Merlanda like I like Merlanda. Is that fair? Fair. Deal. Thank you for being one of the bravest people I've talked to in a long, long time. Anything I can do uh, along the way, anytime you want to call back and say, I'm stuck here, I need some help here, holler at me. I'll walk alongside you. I'm so grateful for you. 